Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel was written to us by Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and then, warning him sternly, Jesus dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything. Just go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere else. This is the gospel of the Lord. So the first reading sets the stage for what is really a rather important message. You notice in this first reading from Leviticus what we call the classic scapegoat mechanism. Every group has to declare another group to be inferior to itself. There is probably no exception to that in human history. I don't know a single culture in all the world that doesn't decide these are the bad people, the unworthy people, and they are excluded. It takes different forms. Here it's leprosy, uh, and they're made to live outside the city. And then they blame the victim. They make the guy walk around declaring his unworthiness, unclean, unclean. And in fact, that's what happens. Most people, when they're told they're inferior or inadequate or not good or impure. They, as we say now, internalize that message and they believe it themselves. And they walk around, as some of our own people do, saying unclean, unclean. They wish it weren't true, but they unfortunately believe it. Now, this has changed, as I said. Oftentimes it's sin or a certain kind of sinner each age and each culture redefines what it thinks is the terrible people. Sometimes in some cultures it's been women, I'm sorry to say. Sometimes it's very often actually people of a different race, people of a different religion. We see the havoc this is causing in our world right now. That just because someone isn't your religion you think you have a right to kill them. And yet we in our own past have contributed to this kind of stupidity. It's called scapegoating. And we're going to see that Jesus pulls people out of this trap. Now, you might just read it as a miracle. But that's not the message. Of course, Jesus can work miracles. What you want to look for in every healing story is how the relationships are rearranged. That's the key. It's not just a wow, wow miracle. It's a rearranging of people's situation in their family, in their neighborhood. That's a big wow. So here we have this poor guy who's having to walk around declaring he's unclean. And he finally says, I'm tired of it. If you wish me, Jesus, you can make me clean. We notice Jesus has a very beautiful human emotion, pity. He feels sorry for the poor guy. And it says he touched him. Now you've got to know in this same book of Leviticus that the first reading was from, if you touched an impure person, then you were one too. Now you think this hasn't lasted? <laughs> if you have anything to do with bad people, you're presumed to be a bad person too. This still operates People have gay friends or assume to be gay. It's just so silly after a while. But this is the way the human mind operates. Once you decide there's bad people, we're all supposed to climb onto a pedestal of purity and stay away from them. Jesus goes right toward them. 
You'd think this would have changed our whole history. And in touching them, I'm sure you've been told this by other teachers, the moment Jesus touches the leper, he has incurred ritual impurity himself. And that's why it says he remained outside in deserted places. It was impossible for Jesus to re-enter the town openly. Now that's called solidarity and should characterize all Christians. That we don't try to separate ourselves from these supposedly unworthy people, the homeless, the poor, anybody who isn't like us is who we usually call the impure people. How selfish, huh? How silly. Because they're not like you, they're bad. <laughs> That's the scapegoat mechanism. That's the way the mind works. Anybody who's different is unworthy because I am the norm of what is good and right and beautiful. Until that is undone, history is not going to change. And Jesus already in this gospel is trying to change the very tangent of history. Now one final note. Why do you think, I know I spent much of my life, because I had to preach on these texts, why is Jesus telling them sternly, don't talk about it, don't tell anybody else? You'd think, he'd say, go tell everybody. This will make me more popular. But again and again, he sternly tells them, don't talk about it. Here's the only conclusion I can come up with. Most religion is hearsay religion. You believe it secondhand because the priest said it or the Bible said it or your neighbor said it or your family believes it. That doesn't get you very far. Jesus doesn't want other people to come to him just because of what this leper said. He healed me. You have to wait for and experience your own healing of your own leprosy. You can't believe hearsay religion. There has to be that moment where you know something for yourself, where your soul knows. Now that's transformation. Those are the kind of people who change the world. They don't believe it because the Bible said it, because the priest said it, but because in their deepest heart of hearts, they know it to be true. And I pray that kind of transformation for you so you won't waste time putting down anybody else or separating yourself from supposedly unworthy people because you will know you are a son of God, a daughter of God, and once you have that, you have everything. You don't need to criticize anybody else.